What's up guys, Tim here from Audio Tutor. Today I wanted to talk about the three EQ mistakes that you are most likely making right now, today. Um, so I'm gonna start with, the first one's a pretty big principle. So um, it is boosting more than you're cutting, right? Um, I remember making this mistake a lot when I first started. So um, you, if, if you jump in there and start boosting frequencies, you're gonna find ones that you like, sure. And you're gonna end up maybe with multiple EQs with lots of frequencies boosted that were sounds that you liked, right? And that, there's nothing wrong with that. That's kind of the basics of mixing. That's what you're doing, trying to find stuff that sounds good to you, make things sound better overall. Um, however, this kind of principle has lots of issues that come a, like kind of further down the line. So um, one of the big ones that come come to mind for me is that you're pushing up the volume overall of your track, right? Which can lead you into not having enough headroom if if you're out there knowing what that means, but not having enough headroom, you might be clipping. Uh, volume is kind of something that we, we wanna keep down overall, right? To just put it in simple terms, wanna keep the volume kind of lower. Um, so boosting lots of frequencies, you're gonna end up bringing everything up and you're gonna get kind of hot and you're gonna have to make up for that by turning everything down afterwards, so that's an issue. But also, I think it's, you end up, I guess without going into too much detail, you end up with a cleaner mix if you think about cutting, cutting out the things that you don't wanna hear and leaving in the good stuff rather than boosting the good stuff. Right, I think it, it ends up with a more natural sound. Right, the there's kind of the goal of an EQ, and I think that's that's misconstrued sometimes and misunderstood. That your EQ is there to take away the things that you don't like the sound of. Right, um, so you find that like whist you, you've recorded a vocal, for example, you find like that whistly frequency and you, you hone in on that frequency and you pull it out and get rid of it, right? You find that low rumble that's annoying and you pull it out and you get rid of it, right? Or, or make it quieter, you don't get rid of it, you make it quieter, right? So you wanna use your EQ to pull out all the stuff you don't want and leave all the good stuff rather than the opposite of like pushing, pushing up all of the good stuff. It just, it results in a more natural sounding mix. So go try it and see if you think I'm correct, right? Go try that. That's the number one thing I'd say, right? You want to, your, your mistake would be to boost more than you're cutting. So you wanna cut more than you're boosting. The second mistake I would say is rolling off too much of the low end. I think it becomes kind of, once you've learned to roll off the low end to get rid of like unwanted noise in the low frequencies, um, you and make space for kick drums and basses and things like that and it's a good technique but once you get used to doing that it becomes a, a habit to every single recording you have every track you're rolling off the low end and that can be useful but just don't roll off too much because um you I'm, what i've seen is say again a vocal you think well i don't want the, any you know a time when i stepped on the the you know, near the mic stand or I kicked the mic stand. I don't want any of that low rumble, anything like that. So I'm gonna roll off the low end. Great, that's gonna work. But remember that those thuds and those bangs and booms, I mean, if there's anything, if there's anything major, you're not gonna be able to roll it off. You're gonna probably need to re-record, right? But um, those little low rumbles, that's like 70 Hertz, 50 Hertz, maybe a hundred but that's kind of pushing it, right? So if you're rolling off up to like 300 hertz, you're actually just getting rid of stuff that's in the recording. Again, you're gonna start making things sound unnatural. It sounds like I'm being kind of over the top about this stuff, but when you think about like, say you've got 40 different tracks in a project and you start doing these EQ moves, they will add up, right? So you've done 40 different EQs. When you listen to the end result, that's when things can start to sound really wacky, right? So you need to make sure that you're creating a natural sound by doing little incremental moves and doing these things kind of more correctly. Um, so yeah, it, it sounds like I'm being a bit pedantic about the whole thing, but 
when you stack up 40 different EQs on 40 different tracks, the end result can sound very different. The third and final mistake that you are most likely making right now is not doing enough. If a snare drum recording really sounds good when you boost like a high shelf uh, 6K and up, if it sounds really good, like, go for it. It, it could be great, right? I think we get a, I've, I've definitely had this, this, uh, I've, I've heard like moving increments of like 3 dB or 4 dB or, or never, never do more than six, that kind of thing. And you get this whole rule book in place and you forget that it is subjective, right? So if you have this recording of a snare drum and you boost it in the high end by, by loads, right? By like 10 dB, but it sounds brilliant. Well, go for it. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? So anyway, well, I hope these three mistakes kind of helped, you know? If, if you're making these mistakes, then hopefully, you know, you're going to take my advice and not make them as much anymore. Let me know if there's any mistakes that come to mind that you remember making when you first started mixing. Um, put it in the comments section and let's start a little conversation here in the, the community. So, um, yeah, I, I, I hope it helped. And if you're looking, by the way, if you're like maybe just starting or you've been doing this for a while um, and you're looking for an equipment list, uh, all the things that you're going to need to get started in the world of recording and mixing, I do have a full uh, guide. It's like an ebook. It's like 25 pages, something like that. It's got all the equipment you need, um, current pricings, things like that. Uh, we're talking like audio converters, we're talking microphones and all of that good stuff. So if you want that, it's absolutely free. Just head on down into the description box, check it out. Um, but until next time, I'll see you soon. Keep making good music.